Uzu Zambola, Bhutan e-learning project welcomes you all to this physics lesson for Key Stage 5 classes 11 and 12. My name is Techen Wangchuk. So as always, I love to challenge you by asking some questions. And similarly today, I want to ask you some questions. That is, do you all love to see rainbows in the air? Because it's so beautiful. And do you love to see yourself in the mirror? Of course, many people are quite obsessed looking into the mirror. Though may not be true for all, however, for myself, I always love to look myself into the mirror. And the science behind these examples are the reflection and refraction of light, which we always use in our daily life. So in this lesson, we'll explore something about reflection and refraction of light based on Huygens' principle. One of the common properties of waves is reflection and refraction. So in this session, I will talk a little bit about the reflection and refraction based on Huygens' principle. I am very much confident that you all have some basic ideas about reflection and refraction. However, to remind you once more, in simple, we can define reflection as process of bouncing back of light after striking on certain surface. And refraction is process of changing the direction of light when it passes from one medium to another medium. Now, as I said, we will look at the process of reflection and refraction based on Huygens' principle. And just to recap on Huygens' principle, so Huygens' principle says every particle of the medium is situated on the wave front and it acts as a new wave source from which fresh waves originate. And second statement is, the secondary wavelets will travel in all the directions with the same speed of original wave. And the third statement is, the envelope of the secondary wavelets in the forward direction at any instant gives the new wave front at that instant. So based on this statement, now we will look at the process of reflection and refraction of light. First, let us look at reflection of plane wave front from plane surface using Huygens principle. So we have a law of reflection, so we are going to prove that law through Huygens principle. Now let us look at this. Let us assume this line as a plane mirror. And you can just look at this slide. Two rays are coming together and when we observe these light rays coming parallel to each other, when A reach at this capital A, B reaches only at point C, which means these two rays are not touching the same plane mirror at the same time. So here, now if we draw a perpendicular line which cuts these two rays, then this is our wave front. Then this red line here indicates the wave front of two rays. Now, <clears throat> as ray from C starts going down, then the ray from point A starts reflecting. So these two rays does not reflect at the same time. As you observed, as ray from point C goes down, then ray from point A started to reflect. So when ray from point A reaches D, then C, the ray coming from C read at uh, point B. And again, when we draw one perpendicular line, this indicates another wave front. So we have first wave front here, that is AC wave front, that, that is called incident wave front. Then this wave front, which is BD wave front, is called reflected wave front. And again, from this wave front, Huygens says the new waves will originate from this uh, wave front BD, and this is how the secondary wave lets will travel, or it will reflect from the mirror. Now from here, you can observe that when I draw two perpendicular lines on point A and B, that is called normal. We draw normal in order to indicate angle of incidence and angle of reflection. So the angle between this normal line and this ray is called angle of incidence. If that is I, mathematically, the angle between this wave front and the mirror should be also I. It is equal to each other. And the angle between the normal and the point B is called angle of reflection. Again, same thing. If this is angle of reflection, the angle between BD and the plane mirror is mathematically equal to angle of reflection R. Now, 
here we can observe that the length AD, the length AD is equal to length CB. So I can write CB equal to AD. Now looking at the diagram, we can see that there are two triangles, similar triangles. So we have triangle ACB and triangle ADB. So we can take it here, triangle ACB is equal to triangle ADB. And again, when you look at the picture, we can say that the angle ACB, this angle is 90 degree, and the angle D, that is ADB, is also 90 degree, which means we have two triangles with same angle and also we have common base of a triangle that, that is A and B, which means from there we can conclude, if I draw the diagram it is like this, you can see here we have two similar triangles, we have here A, C, B, and we have triangle A, D, B. These two angles are equal to each other, that is 90 degree and 90 degree. And these two sides are same to each other, which means the opposite angles of two triangles will be equal to each other, which means this angle I and this angle R are equal to each other. So it is angle I is equal to angle R. So this angle is equal to this angle. From here, we are proving the law of reflection which says that in a reflection the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection now let us look at refraction of plane wavefront from plane surface using Huygens principle so for refraction minimum we need to medium to have refraction so in this case let us take this plane line as the interface of two media we can assume that upper medium is air and the second medium is glass. So let us say two rays are coming from air. And as you have seen that when ray A reached at point A, the ray B is actually reaching only at point B. So which means these two rays are not reaching at the surface at the same time. Now here, as we draw one, <coughs> perpendicular line, this indicates the wavefront. So what happens is, as ray from point A starts to enter into the second medium, the ray from point B continues in the same medium. So you can check it once. So you can see, when ray A reached at point D, B reaches at point C. And looking at the diagram, we can see that AD is shorter than BC. This happens because as light changes medium, especially when light goes from rarer medium to denser medium, the speed of light decreases, so the distance covered in the same time is lesser than in the rarer medium. So here we can say that AD is smaller than BC. So we can calculate the speed of the light as v1 if we take the velocity of light as v1 in air then v1 in equal amount of time it has covered the distance of bc so we can write bc divided by time t and as light starts to pass from b to c then light from point a goes from a to d so that is the distance covered so speed in second medium we can write v2 is equal to AD over T. Now simplifying this equation or formula we can write therefore T is equal to BC over V1 and here we can write T is equal to AD over V2. Here we can see that these two equations are equal to each other because we have T and T so therefore we can write BC over V1 is equal to AD over V2. Consider this as equation 1. Now coming back to the slide again. 
as we draw one perpendicular line for the point D and C, this is the second wave front. We call it refracted wave front. From there, then these two rays will move in that direction, and we can clearly see that you know, refraction has taken place. Actually, as per the properties of light, this ray should pass straight like this. And similarly, ray B should also pass straight. However, when it enters into the second medium, there is change in direction. That is what we call refraction of light. Now, from this diagram, we can see that there are two similar triangles. We have triangle ABC, and we have triangle, triangle A, D, and C. So I have A here, D, and C. So if you look at this diagram, you can see that the side AC is common for both the triangle. We have same base here, that is A and C. Now, as we complete this diagram to point out angle of incidence and angle of refraction, we can see that the angle between this line and the incident ray is called angle of incidence. And mathematically, this should be equal to the angle between the wavefront AB and the side AC. Similarly, the angle between this normal and the refracted ray is angle of refraction. Mathematically, this angle is equal to the angle between the wavefront DC and the side AC. Now, from this triangle, I can show it here. This is angle I, then this is angle R. Now, mathematically, we know if this is angle I, we can use sine function to find angle I. That is, sine I is equal to opposite of the angle to the hypotenuse. So from here, the angle, when we take this angle I, opposite side is BC. So I can write BC divided by AC. And for triangle ADC, triangle ADC, when we take angle R, the opposite side is AD. So I can write here, sine R is equal to AD over BC. Therefore, as we rearrange this equation, we will get AC is equal to BC. And when we take this sine I to the opposite of the equal sign, it is equal to sine I. Similarly here, we can rearrange the equation. We will get AC is equal to a d over sine r. So from these two equations, again, this equation and this equation is equal to each other because we have a c here, we have a c here. Therefore, I can write b c over sine i is equal to a d over sine r. Now from here, I want to take sine function together and rearrange the equation. Therefore, I will get sine i divided by sine r is equal to bc over ad. You can take this one as equation 2. So, in place of bc over ad, I can use this equation. From here, what we will get is, we'll get like this, BC over AD is equal to, as I take this V1 to the other side, it is V1 over V2. So in place of BC and AD, I will now substitute with V1 over V2. So here in place of BC over AD, I want to put this one. So now it becomes sine R I over sine r is equal to v1 over v2. So what is v1? v1 is velocity of light in medium 1. v2 is velocity of light in medium 2. That describes or that gives you the constant called mu. This is the constant for given pair of medium. Then this is called the refractive index of the medium. Now, this is actually called Snell's law. So what is Snell's law? Actually, Snell's law is the ratio 
of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction and it is constant for given pair of medium. So mathematically we represent mu is equal to v1 over v2 that describes the refractive index of the medium. So from this value what actually we can understand is this one will give us the ability of medium to refract the light. For example as we put on this spectacle here we are using Snell's law. Spectacle has certain ability to refract the light falling on it. So even in spectacles we use Snell's law. So this is the end of my session and before I end up my session let me give you some questions. First one is why do we use curved mirror at the turnings of the road while we use plane mirror in the dressing room? Then second one says, which law can be used to explain the working of powerful lenses in the camera? And third one, you can list few examples of reflection and refraction of light that you use every day in your life. So with this, thank you so much. And I will see you all in my next lesson.